What's up, everybody? My name's Jeff Everhart from the WP Engine Developer Relations Team. In this video, you're going to learn how to build a basic headless WordPress site using the Nux3 framework. Nux3 is the only major full stack framework that uses Vue as its JavaScript framework. There's a lot to love about Nux3, including some super powered dev tools, auto imports, and a ton of useful composables that make your life as a developer much easier. There's a lot to cover in this crash course, so let's get started. All right, Nux3 builds itself as the intuitive web framework. And I think that this is a really apt description. There's lots of useful features baked directly into the framework and its abstractions. There's a ton of different modules from the community that you can install uh, that can extend the functionality of Nuxt, and ultimately you get to use Vue uh, to power your web app or site, which is great if you're a big Vue fan. It's worth mentioning that this video is actually a video version of this blog post, uh, which is gonna contain all of the steps I walk through. Um, so if you wanna follow along and view a written description, and with code samples, you can get to that in the video description below. And then if you just wanna jump ahead to see what we end up building, I have this Nux WordPress starter, which is essentially the finished product of what we'll build in this video tutorial. So to get started, let's go ahead and close out these tabs. And then let's uh, start by installing Nux. So we're gonna do npx uh, nuxy at latest. And then we're gonna say init, and then we're gonna actually call this app Nuxt WordPress. And so we're gonna to need to uh, go ahead and install that stuff. And then once we've done that, we can CD into Nuxt WordPress. And then we should be able to run npm install to install all of our project dependencies. Okay, and after those packages have finished installing, we can run npm run dev to start our development server. Uh, Nuxt will boot up Nitro and then uh, give us a local server at localhost 3000. So if we visit localhost 3000 in your web browser, we should see a page that looks just like this. Now that your Nuxt project is up and running, uh, there are actually a couple of additional dependencies that we're going to want to install to get us started. So what I'll go ahead and do is just kill our dev server. And then I'm going to npm install, uh, then we're going to do an at next module uh, called dev tools. And then we're going to do dash D to install that as a dev dependency. And now that we've installed the dev tools, we're gonna to do one more thing. So we're gonna install another uh, Nux module, and this is gonna be at nuxt.js uh, slash tailwind CSS. And then we're gonna do dash dash save so that we uh, save this as a regular dependency. Okay, great. And so the next couple of changes that we'll need to make will have to actually be made directly within our project files. So to access the code for this, I'm just gonna open this up in VS Code using this shortcut. And we'll just sorta, you know, give us a little bit more real estate here and we can go ahead and uh, I'm gonna close out this terminal and uh, use the, the built-in VS Code terminal for whatever else I need to do for this tutorial. So what we'll do from here is actually open up our Nuxt config file um, and we'll want to uh, go ahead and add two modules to this as well. And so we'll do this modules and this is going to take in array and here we will just pass in, you know, at Nuxt DevTools and then we'll go ahead and also here specify, you know, that we're doing at nuxjs slash tailwind CSS. And we'll need to add a comma here just so that everything formats nicely. Go ahead and boot that up. And then let's uh, boot up our dev server from here, get that running, and then just uh, 
refresh Nuxt for us. Great, and then now we can see that all of that stuff is working. Okay, it seems like in the time between writing the post and publishing this video, there have been a couple of updates to the way that Nuxt default handles DevTools. So it looks like we have this option here to enable it with this object um, or use it as a module. It looks like uh, both of those are still valid options. Um, so choose whichever one you want and have that be that. Uh, to access the dev tools, we can uh, use this Nux icon in the bottom left uh, to open up this really rich interactive pane. There's a ton of options here. Like we can see, you know, different runtime config values that we've defined. We can look at the different modules that we have, like the Tailwind um, module that we already installed or install new Nux modules. Um, we can look at all of our different components, and these are really the ones that Nux provides for us. We can also look at our app's routing. Uh, so that's actually how we're going to enable routing. It's by opening up the routing tab, and then we're going to click enable routing. Uh, and then that's going to go ahead and it's going to make some changes to our project. Um, so we've got app.view here, and we've got a uh, pages directory with an index uh, route. So let's go ahead and just uh, reload our dev server. Um, and then when we do, hopefully we get uh, this message right here, Nux routing setup successfully, your current route is this. Okay, so now that we have routing enabled in our application, let's talk about how routing in Nux 3 works. Uh, much like other full stack frameworks, Nux 3 uses a page based routing methodology. Um, so when we enabled routing, it did two things for us. It created a pages directory with an index.view file for our index route that's being rendered right here at the root of our application. And it also made an update to app.view, which is the entry point for our Nuxt app. So what this did is before there was a component used here called Nuxt Welcome that showed the really nice uh, black and green welcome page that we saw. But now that's replaced by nux.page. So when we enable routing, uh, this is basically where Nuxt outputs your page components, right? So we use this Nux page component inside of app and optionally layouts to render the different page-based routes based on uh, Nuxt matching a particular route. So we can see with the index.view file, that consists of two different things, right? We have this script up here, which is all of the JavaScript the composables and, and you know data fetching that we want to do and make available inside of our template, which is the HTML for our file. So we're going to use this index.view file to render the home page of our WordPress site, uh, but we'll need one additional route that's going to be a little bit more flexible. So inside of the pages directory, we'll go ahead and create a new file. Uh, and this is going to be a catch-all route. So to do that in view, we use the square brackets and then we're going to say dot, 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 URI. Uh, and then that's going to be a dot view file. Um, and then inside of this, we'll go ahead and just create a template. And then inside of that, we'll just do an H1 that says URI page. If I save that um, and come back out here, now I should be able to put in any sort of random URL and have that URI page template rendered. And we can also see here that now we have uh, an additional route that is defined inside of our view dev tools, where here we have the index, here we have URI, which is sort of this catch-all, so it's showing you what kind of pattern matching that it's doing. Um, and so from here, what we'll do is actually start building out some components that we'll use inside of these route templates. To get started building components, we're gonna to wanna to come back into our project and create an additional folder that we're just gonna call components. And this is really just convention. It could be named whatever we want, um, but we'll start by creating a header component. Um, so we'll go ahead and inside of this, we'll create a new file and we'll call this the header dot view. And then like most view components, this is going to have a template. And since we're not really doing anything interactive here, we don't need a script tag. So inside this file, we'll just add some basic markup. So we'll go ahead and create a header element. And then inside of that header, we'll create an H1 
uh, that just says Nuxt WP. And then on that, we're gonna go ahead and add some Tailwind classes. So we'll open up a class attribute, say equals, you know, so we're gonna do this relative with full, then we'll do P6, so say height, uh, 85 pixels, auto margin, and then BG slate 200. And then additionally, we'll also throw some styles on our H1 tag. Uh, so we'll save that. We're just gonna do text uh, for Excel to make this text just a little bit larger. So we'll go ahead and save that out. Um, and then to start using that inside of our uh, page components, we don't necessarily need to do any importing. Nux is gonna handle auto importing for us. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm, I'm just gonna delete out this boilerplate that Nux created for us. And then I should be able to just reference the header component like so. And then we'll also just add here a div and we're gonna give this some Tailwind classes as well. And so this is going to be our post grid essentially. So we'll say grid and we're gonna do uh, gap eight, then grid calls. Uh, we're gonna do one and then on large screen sizes, we're gonna say grid calls. It's gonna be three. And then we'll throw some extra padding on this. Let's just say for right now, go ahead and save that. And then uh, Nux should go ahead and let's see if we can switch our route to our index and see if that loads. So there we can see, great, we're getting that header. And that's the benefit of auto imports is we can just use the component without importing it. Uh, so it makes it really easy to do development in Nuxt. In the next step, we'll work on adding some dynamic data uh, into this grid, this post grid component. Okay, so up until this point, we spent a lot of time talking about Nuxt 3, getting Nuxt 3 set up. We haven't yet talked about what our WordPress site needs to look like to get this data headlessly. So let's switch modes for a second and talk about that. Uh, so in this example, I'm gonna use actually uh, a remote WordPress site that I have on WP Engine, uh, and it's not anything special, right? I've got just a couple of posts here that I've created for various demos and things like that. And really as far as plugins for this tutorial, the only other plugin that's really required is WP GraphQL, which turns your WordPress website into a powerful GraphQL server. So it adds this GraphQL tab, to my WordPress site and it allows me to, you know, compose these queries, either writing them or using the query composer. And then I can run those queries uh, against my live WordPress data. So here you can see we're getting some posts uh, and some data about those posts uh, returned back to us here. If you don't have a production WordPress site or a remote WordPress site, you can always build one locally. And for that, we like to recommend uh, WP Engine's uh, local development environment. It'll let you get started in just a couple of clicks. And there's a ton of resources out there that you can find on how to get started doing that. Um, so with that, we can start to uh, get some dynamic data out of our WordPress site and into our Nux3 application. To do that, we'll first need to make the URL to our WordPress's graph, WordPress site's GraphQL endpoint available inside of our Nuxt app. So what we'll do is we'll head back into our Nuxt config file. And what we're gonna want to do is add a runtime config option. Um, so that's going to be an object. And that's gonna take, uh, so we're gonna say we want this to be public because uh, we'll want the app to use this sort of regardless of whether it's server side or client side. And then we'll go ahead and call that WordPress URL. And then what we'll do is we'll just grab the URL of our WordPress site right here. And that's gonna be a string. Uh, and then we'll just append GraphQL. 
because that's essentially where we're pointing this. And then we'll just throw a comma in there so we've got our syntax right. Um, and so if we save that, we'll see that Nux should refresh. And then if we come back and open up our dev tools and look at runtime config, we can see, hey, that public runtime config variable called WordPress URL is now available for us to use elsewhere in our Nuxt application. So the next step in making our index page dynamic, now that we have this WordPress URL provided to our Nuxt application, is to actually make some GraphQL queries uh, against our WordPress site. So to do that, I'm gonna hop back into our Nuxt code and open up the index.view file. And here we have the header that we imported earlier and then our post grid uh, that we're working on filling. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna hop out off screen and just copy a snippet of code from this uh, blog post and paste that in here so we can sort of walk through that step by step. Um, and so we actually don't need this line uh, using the use route composable, which really looks at the current route and gives you some information about it. We'll use that later, um, but we don't, we don't need that right now. Um, so what we're gonna first do is we, we use the use runtime config composable to gain access to the config variable uh, that we established in our Nux config file. Then in the next step, we're gonna sort of destructure uh, the response from the use fetch composable, which is Nuxt's uh, methodology for uh, fetching. And so the first argument that we're gonna pass this use, use fetch composable is the WordPress URL. So config.public.wordpress URL. And the second argument is going to be an object. So that looks like this. Here, this looks pretty similar to what you might pass to a regular fetch call. We're telling it to use the get method, which allows us to take advantage of network caching that may or may not be enabled on your WordPress instance. And then we pass this query object. Um, and then the way that we define this is particular to GraphQL. So it expects uh, another param called query. And then again, we sort of pass it this formatted GraphQL query. Uh, which looks very similar to the one we composed over here. The only difference being uh, in this one, we're getting our first 10 posts. And in this, we're just kind of saying get all of them. Um, but you can see that the fields that we're returning are the same. Uh, and so, right, we've got this query, which represents the, the, the whole query string. Then we have this particular param called query that the GraphQL endpoint expects. And then actually the, the query itself, right, as a string. Um, and Nuxt will handle formatting all of this for us, which is great and uh, especially easy to do using get in this way instead of post. Now, the last argument that the use fetch composable is going to take, and this is optional, is that it can take a transform callback. And this is really nice because if you look at the result of our GraphQL query here, you know, we've got data.post.nodes. We've got to do some traversing to get at the array of post objects that we want to use in our code. So the transform callback essentially lets us uh, take the result of this call, right? So instead of getting data directly, uh, we pass the result of this query into this transform callback as data, and then we can return something else. So here we just do that traversal inside of our transform callback. So we're digging down into data.data.post.nodes, and then we're returning that uh, as a particular type. We're saying, hey, we've got these fields on it. All those fields should be strings. Um, and that just allows us to have our code be a little bit simpler and it prevents us from having to do that programmatically. So that's one of the features I really love about this uh, use fetch composable. It's really handy. So we'll go ahead and save that. And that actually shouldn't make any changes to our UI since we haven't done anything. We've loaded the data, but we still haven't displayed it. Um, so in the next step, what we'll do is we're going to create a new component and we're just going to call this post.view. Um, and then I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit in my article and grab some code from off screen uh, that we can use in here. And we'll go ahead and just paste that in its entirety and then walk through it. So there are two important things happening inside of this code. And we'll start with the script tag first. Right, because script tags and single file view components are where all of the logic for your components are going to live. 
It's how we define props, how we fetch data, all of those nice things. So, and that's what we're doing here essentially, right? We're uh, using this define props uh, composable to tell this post component that it should accept a post prop. And that's gonna be a record uh, and it's gonna have these things, you know, title, date, excerpt, URI, uh, and all of those they can ex it, it can expect to be strings. Um, and that lets us, you know, do some nice type checking and stuff as we pass it. All right, so that's, that's, that's how you would essentially define what props your component can expect uh, and can accept in this, in this scenario. And then let's shift our, our view to the template tag, right? So template tag we've got um, at, a, at the topmost level, we have uh, a component that Nux provides called Nuxt link. Um, and this is essentially how Nuxt handles routing, right? So if I want to route from one route to another, uh, I'm going to use this Nuxt link component, and I have this um, to attribute where I've passed in the post URI, right? So when we click this, we're going to navigate from our homepage to the URI for that particular post. And then inside of that link wrapping it, I just have a div with a bunch of, um, you know, Tailwind CSS classes that you'll see in a second. And then we dig down and then we have our H2 where we're actually interpolating our post title using uh, these these handlebars or mustache brackets. And then we're also doing this something similar with uh, the date of the post, right? So this should provide us with a nice formatted clickable link that contains the post title and the post date. Um, and then so for us to actually use this inside, so let's go ahead and save this file. And then for us to use this inside of our index file, we can hop back there and then inside of our grid, we should just be able to uh, access our post component. And what we're going to do here is we're going to essentially do a V4 loop and we're going to set that equal to, uh, let's see, what do we want to do here? I believe it's for post in data. And so again, this is um, a local variable post that's going to be passed into each one of these things. Um, and then data is essentially what we defined up here in our script tag, right? So data is the result of this transform callback, which should just be this array of post data. And so we're saying for each post in the data array, uh, create us a new post thing. And then so we're going to need to do a couple of things. So we're going to need to specify a key. And that's going to be unique, ideally, so it should be post.uri. And then it's also going to accept a post prop, right? So that will just be post. Um, and then if we go ahead and save this and refresh our homepage, excellent, we're getting all of our individual posts. Uh, to show just the way we want. We have all of our nice Tailwind styles applied. And then if I go ahead and click one, it should route us to our URI page. And that will be the next step of our project. Okay, so in the next step of this project, we're going to focus on making this URI page a little bit more usable. We can see that all of our index, uh, all the posts are displaying correctly on our index page, but we want to make these post detail pages dynamic as well. Um, so to do that, we'll open up the uri.view component. And again, I'm just going to grab some code from off screen that we can work through in this step. Uh, so let's paste that in here. And the first thing that we'll do is again, let's walk through our script tag because uh, there's just a little bit of difference between how we're handling this. And in the last step, we actually deleted some of the route information from our index file because we didn't need it. But in this example, we do. So here, that's the first variable that we define is we, we extract this route variable from the use route composable. And then we're going to create another variable right below it called URI. And what we're going to do here is essentially dig into the route params, right? So when we're on this page, this is essentially part of the route param. But since we're using a catch-all route, maybe this uh, there's multiple path segments here, right? Maybe it's slash blog slash tbh single origin coffee, or you know any depth of of path segment, 
right? So what that gives us is that URI in this case is not a string and it's a, an array of those path segments. So what we need to do is essentially reconstruct those path segments into an actual path using uh, by joining those path segments with a forward slash. And so what this essentially gives us is, you know, at the end of the day, this will give us slash uh, TBH single coffee, so on and so forth. But if you had a, a more complex path, you would do that same thing, right? And so that's what's going on here. We're taking this from an array uh, to a string that represents a path that we can use in WordPress. Um, right below that, we're gonna, again, extract our config variable. And then just like we did in the other example, we're going to use the use fetch composable to make a get call out to our WordPress URL. So that's all the same, use fetch, we're passing in the WordPress URL. The second object or argument that use fetch takes is this configuration object where we say, hey, we wanna use the get method. Here is our query uh, string. And then uh, on that query string, there are two params. The first one is query, which I know can get a little bit confusing, especially when we also have query inside of the actual GraphQL query. Um, but here we're you know, passing in the GraphQL query. And let's take a second and unpack that, right? So we're saying here's a query, uh, we give it a name optionally, um, and then this is going to take a variable called URI, and that is going to be a required string. Right, and then once we do that, we're going to execute a, a query called node by URI. And what that tells WordPress to do is it's saying, hey, I'm passing you a URI, go get me uh, that content node. And so maybe it's a post, maybe it's a media item. Um, we don't necessarily know. And so then I, I need to specify that on a post, I want back these individual fields, right? ID, title, date, content. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're getting the uh, content node by URI. Um, we're saying, if it's a post, give us back these fields. And really for this, that's all we should be expecting. Um, but sometimes if you wanna use this pattern, you might need to define other things. So on a page, I want these. On a custom post type, I might want these fields, so on and so forth. So that's one query string uh, param, right? Query itself. And we pass in the query and Nuxt handles uh, formatting all of this for us in a really clean way. Um, and then lastly, we're going to pass in an additional one, right? Where we need to pass in our variables. So that is another query parameter that would get can, you know, created into this get string. Uh, and there we're gonna pass our URI and we are going to pass this variable that we constructed earlier from the current routes parameters. Um, so we're passing in query and our variables and then Again, we're using a transform callback, right? Where we're taking the data that we get back from use fetch, and then we're going to return uh, data.data.node by URI, which is just, we're doing that GraphQL traversal right here. Um, and then another thing that we'll do, and I'll talk about right now, is we're using the use head composable. This is an SEO thing. So this is just Nuxt's method of allowing you to set uh, those those SEO head type variables. So there's title, there's meta, there's lots of useful stuff here for SEO. Um, okay, so we've done all that. And then let's take a look now at our template tag. So here you can see that we're including the header component that we created earlier. Um, and then we just have a main element with some uh, background and margin applied. And then inside of that is where we're actually using our WordPress content. Um, so here we have this H1 where we're again using this mustache or handlebar syntax to print out the title. Same thing with the date. Um, but one new thing that we're introducing is because we're requesting the content of a particular post, that is going to come back as rendered HTML. So that's not something we can just interpolate uh, using this mustache syntax. And Vue has its own uh, method of handling that using this v-html directive. Um, and so that's where we want to re pass in any uh, already rendered HTML that we want to render inside the application. So we pass in the content there and Vue will handle rendering that for us. And just like React's dangerously set inner HTML, just worth being aware that this does introduce some uh, cross-site scripting and sort of security concerns. But a lot of those have been handled for you on the WordPress side, right? WordPress has a lot of sanitization methods that uh, keep scripts out of your HTML content unless you're doing something uh, intentional. 
So uh, just keep that in mind. If we go ahead and save this, hopefully uh, when we reload this page, yep, we get all of our stuff displayed just the way that we want it, right? So we've got our title, our date, and then all of our HTML content echoed out right here. Um, and if we hop back to our index page and sort of click through all of our other posts, we can see, okay, great, this is working, uh, I guess, just how we would expect it to. And we have a nice and dynamic, uh, basic headless WordPress site. Awesome. So in the next steps, we'll talk about a couple of different ways that you can deploy this project. Okay. So as we wrap up, I just wanted to take another second and examine the Nuxt website for a moment because there's a lot of useful information. And this has been a really quick tutorial where we sort of glossed over lots of the composables that Nuxt provides you. So Nuxt has great docs, and I would recommend you taking a look at these as you get started. Um, and a lot of what we've done here, you can see we've talked about routing, we've talked about SEO and meta, um, we've talked a little bit on data fetching. But we've done all of this at a really high level, and each one of the composables that I've showed you has way more power under the hood that can help you build your site or application. So definitely check out the docs. But what I wanted to bring us to to wrap up this uh, particular tutorial was the various deployment methods that Nuxt offers. So out of the box, uh, Nuxt is sort of meant to be uh, deployed as a Node.js server. But it also has a lot of different deployment targets, which I think we're seeing lots of these full stack frameworks sort of adopt as more flexible deployment locations. Um, and so when we run Nuxt build, essentially, we, it generates this server file for you and so that you can deploy this to any node-based server hosting by just running node uh, against this, this server output file. Um, and if you look at the article that I wrote, you can see some sort of examples of doing that. And if you wanna deploy that to our Atlas platform for hosting headless WordPress, we have a guide that tells you exactly how to do that. So that would sort of deploy Node in this like universal rendering method where we get both SSR sometimes and client side routing really flexible. But there are definitely some other options that are worth calling out. Um, one is the idea that you could just deploy this entire NUC site statically using this crawl based pre-rendering method, which is really, really neat. So if you run NPX NUXI generate, it'll generate a, a static version of your NUC site and it will uh, basically create all of the different payload files. So every time we make one of those requests, it'll create a JSON file that your Nuxt app can use. Um, and so it's not actually hitting your API, which is, which is really cool. But then they've also introduced sort of selective pre-rendering so that we kind of get the best of both worlds. And like we get this hybrid approach of having some routes pre-rendered, having some routes still be dynamic, so there's a lot of flexibility here um, in how you want to deploy your application, um, but the default is just going to be this sort of Nitro Node.js server, which for most people is going to work great. Um, so again, thanks for watching this video. I'm really excited to share all of these details regarding Nuxt with you, and please reach out to me or anybody else on the WP Engine Developer Relations team if you have any questions about getting started with Nuxt and Headless WordPress. Thanks for watching.